Hello, everyone. This is Jacqueline Leskovic. I'm the network librarian for the National Network of Libraries of Medicine, Greater Midwest Re Region. And today, I'm here to introduce the um, our guest, Gary Gant, who's going to be here uh, today to talk to us about HRSA. I'm going to make sure that you are all seeing the, the PowerPoint, the welcome PowerPoint. And everyone says yes. Uh, just to let you know, there is streaming today. So if you need closed captioning, Miles has just put the link in the box. Um, click on that and you will have a, um, a, a, a current streaming um, closed caption. So thank you very much. OK, well, here we are uh, with uh, another one of our uh, Kernel of Knowledge series programs. Uh, the Kernel of Knowledge uh, kernel comes from the fact that the uh, GMR region of the National Network of Libraries of Medicine is located at the University of o Iowa. So there you get it, Kernel Corn. <laughs> yeah. And I have the great pleasure of introducing Gary Gant. Um, Gary is a community-oriented public health practitioner by training and serves as a deputy regional administrator for HRSA's Office of Regional Operations in Region 5, which is based here in Chicago. He serves Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio, and Wisconsin. Prior to joining the Chicago Regional Office, Gary served as a public health analyst for HRSA in Region 10, which is based in Seattle, which is also the home of our Pacific Northwest region of NNLM. During his tenure at HRSA, Gary has led several major initiatives to improve health outcomes for African immigrants and refugees, Native American, Native American youth, and those living in rural areas. Prior to joining HRSA, Gary was an executive officer for the Veteran Administration's Puget Sound Healthcare System, where he served as the Privacy and Freedom of Information Act officer. Gary has also worked in various capacities for state public health, including programs for immunizations and maternal and child health. Gary has an MPH in Community-Oriented Public Health Practice and an MBA in Healthcare Management. He has received various public health fellowships and awards, including the Quentin Burdick Fellowship in Rural Health, the Tobacco Scholars Career Development Fellowship, and the HRSA Administrator's Special Citation Award in 2015 and 2016 for outstanding performance. We are very fortunate to have Gary be with us today, and he is going to take over the presentation um, and share his slides with us. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, my name is Gary Gant, and thank you, Jacqueline, for that uh, wonderful introduction. Today, I'm going to give you an overview of the Health Resources and Services Administration. Um, I'm giving an overview of its programs, as well as the Office of Regional Operations. HRSA's Office of Re uh, Regional Operations in Region 5 consists of the um, states of Illinois, um, Indiana, Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio, and Wisconsin. Today I'm going to uh, get acquainted with uh, NMLM, um, the Great Midwest Region, along with HRSA Region 5. I'm going to provide you with an overview of HRSA, and I'm also going to provide you with an overview of some of the HRSA bureaus and offices and their programs. I also have some updates on recent HRSA COVID-19 funding to HRSA-funded health centers in the region, also some technical assistance and resource information as well as how to connect to the Office of Regional Operations here in Chicago. First, I would like to um, share with you some information. Our present, our present administrator is Tom Ingalls. He serves as the administrator for the Health Resources and Services Administration. And our mission is to improve health outcomes and to address health disparities through access to quality services, a skilled health workforce, and innovative high-value programs. Gary, I'm going to stop you for a second there. Um, your audio seems to be uh, fading in and fading out. Okay. Uh, so perhaps you can just continue uh, okay. speaking loudly. Thank you. 
All right. Is this better? Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Jacqueline. So um, the first goal of HRSA is to improve access to quality health care and services. Our second goal is to foster a healthcare workforce able to address current and emerging needs. A third goal is to enhance population health and address health disparities through community partnerships. Another goal is to maximize the value and impact of HRSA programs. And the final goal of HRSA is to optimize HRSA operations to, to enhance efficiency, effectiveness, innovation, and accountability. HRSA supports more than 90 programs that provide health care to people who are geographically isolated, economically, or medically challenged. HRSA does this through grants and cooperative agreements to more than 3,000 awardees, including community and faith-based organizations, colleges and universities, hospitals, state, local, and tribal governments, and private entities. Every year, HRSA programs serve tens of millions of people, including people living with HIV and AIDS, pregnant women, mothers and their families, and those otherwise unable to access quality health care. In regards to HRSA funding um, for fiscal year um, 2019, HRSA had a budget of $11.7 billion. In regards to the appropriation for funds, this funding provides dollars to many programs. Um, as far as the various programs, the Ryan White HIV AIDS program received $2.3 billion to support cities, states, and local community-based organizations to provide care and treatment, medication, and support services to people living with HIV. Later in the presentation, I will give you a overview of some of the initiatives In 2019, the Primary Health Care Bureau received $5.6 billion for affordable, accessible, quality, and cost-effective primary health care services. And this funding is primarily to the HRSA-funded health centers, and I will also highlight that later on in this presentation. HRSA also appropriated um, to the Maternal and Child Health Bureau $1.3 billion to improve the health of all mothers, children, and their families. And this is primarily done through Title V funding to all states and jurisdictions. HRSA also provided $1.6 billion to the Bureau of Health Workforce to educate, train, and connect healthcare professionals to communities in need. HRSA also funds the Federal Office of Rural Health Policy. And in fiscal year 2019, $300 $18 million was used to promote better health care services in rural America. HRSA also provided $286 million for family planning. And we also have the Healthcare Systems Bureau, um, which received $124 million to promote oversight to organ and tissue donation and transplantation services, the poison control centers, the vaccine injury compensation program, and the drug discount programs. And the remaining $155 million was used to support HRSA's program oversight and operations. As far as recent funding um, to combat COVID-19, um, the, there was a coronavirus preparedness and response supplementary appropriation, um, which was released on March 24th. And on this date, HRSA announced the release of $100 million um, to to combat COVID-19. And these awards range from approximately $50,000 to more than $300,000 to our health centers, with an average of approximately $70,000 per health center. These funds are for expenses, including personnel costs, associated with prevention, preparedness, and response to COVID-19. On Wednesday, April 8th, HRSA announced another round of funding. And this was in the amount of $1.3 billion. And this was funding to health centers provided by the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act. The average award per health center was approximately $950,000. And these CARES awards provide funding to support the detection of coronavirus and or the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of COVID-19 including maintaining or increasing health center capacity and staffing levels during the coronavirus-related public health emergency. 
Health centers have flexibility to use CARES funds as circumstances and needs evolve. In regards to some of our other bureaus and offices, I would like to walk you through some of the major bureaus and offices within HRSA. One of the um, bureaus is the Healthcare Assistance Bureau, and they deal primarily with transplantation. More than 145 million people are registered to be organ donors, which is an all-time high. And more than 19 million people are registered blood stem cell donors. Poison control centers are also part of the um, Healthcare Assistance Bureau, and they provide poison information services to residents throughout the United States and its territories. One of our largest bureaus is the Bureau of Health Workforce. Many of you may be very familiar with the National Health Service Corps, which is part of the Bureau of Health Workforce. Um, there are three focus areas for the Bureau of Health Workforce. One is preparing a quality skilled workforce. Another is improving workforce distribution. And the third is advancing modern health care. And this is done through community-based training, um, working in rural and underserved areas, and telehealth. And this hopefully will help increase the effectiveness and efficiency of our workforce supply. Another bureau is the Ryan White HIV AIDS program, which is under the HIV AIDS Bureau. And in 2017, it served 534,000 clients. 73.6% 73 of the clients were racial or ethnic minorities, and 47.1% of the clients identified as Black or African American, and 23% of the clients identified as Hispanic or Latino. This program also served more than 50% of people living with diagnosed HIV in the United States, and 62.8% of the clients were living at or below 100% of the federal poverty level. There is a special initiative that HRSA is involved in, and that is ending the HIV epidemic, which is a plan for America. During the 2019 State of the Union Address, the administration announced the new ending the HIV epidemic, which is a plan for America. This will be a 10-year initiative beginning in fiscal year 2020, to achieve the important goal of reducing new HIV infections to less than 3,000 per year by the year 2030. And it's also um, in part of the initiative is reducing new infections to this level would essentially mean that HIV transmissions would be rare and meet the definition of ending the epidemic. In regards to geographic locations for ending the HIV epidemic, the efforts are focused in 48 counties, Washington, D.C., in San Juan, Puerto Rico, where more than 50% of HIV diagnoses occurred in 2016 and 2017, and seven states with substantial rural HIV burden. And here is a map and the distribution of where these efforts are, are being led. There are four pillars of ending the HIV epidemic. The first pillar is diagnosing all people with HIV as early as possible. The second pillar is treating HIV rapidly after diagnosis and effectively in all people with HIV to help them get and stay virally suppressed. The third pillar is preventing people at risk for HIV using proven prevention interventions, including pre-exposure prophylaxis and syringe service programs and to respond quickly to potential HIV outbreaks to get needed prevention and treatment services to people who need them. So the goal is a 75% reduction in new HIV diagnoses in five years and a 90% reduction in 10 years. Now, earlier I mentioned the Health Center Program, which is one of the largest programs within HRSA, and that is under the Bureau of Primary Health Care. So more than 27 million people, which is one in 12 nationwide, rely on a HRSA supported health center for affordable, accessible primary health care, including one in nine children. And, th and this, uh, these are for children that are 17 years or younger nationwide. One in three people living in poverty nationwide. 
one in five people living in rural communities, and more than 355,000 veterans. And I want to share with you information regarding the health center sites within Region 5. In Michigan, there are 38 entities um, that are HRSA-funded health centers, and these entities have over 327 sites. In Indiana, we have 25 entities with over 250 sites. In Ohio, we have 48 with over 378 sites. In Minnesota, we have 16 entities that have 86 sites. In Wisconsin, 17 entities that have 180 sites. And in Illinois, we have 45 entities with over 465 sites. The next bureau that I'm going to highlight is the Maternal and Child Health Bureau. And the MCH block grants funded 59 states and jurisdictions to provide health care and public health services for an estimated 56 million people, including pregnant women, infants, children, and children with special health care needs. So 86% of all pregnant women, 99% of infants, and 55% of children nationwide benefit from a Title V service or program. In fiscal year 2017, 156,000 parents and children received home visiting service. 36% of these lived in urban counties and 22% of these lived in rural counties. So as you can see, the Maternal and Child Health Bureau has a far-reaching far range as far as services um, to everyone within this country. And our next office is the Federal Office of Rural Health Programs. So this is a very large, uh, they have many programs, um, they touch many and there are so many touch points within this Federal Office of Rural Health Programs. There are four divisions or four areas um, that they focus on. And one is the community-based division. The second is the Office for the Advancement of Telehealth. The fourth is a Policy and Research Division. And the fourth is a Hospital State Division. So the community-based division deals a lot with um, rural health, opioid programs, various programs. Um, they also have the Black Lung Clinics Program and the Radiation Exposure and Screening Education Program. The Office for the Advance of, of Telehealth, they, they provide the telehealth network grants and they also fund the telehealth resource centers which are located throughout the country. And they also fund the telehealth centers for excellence. We also work very closely with the Veterans Health Administration on the Flex Rural Veterans Health Access Program and the Licensure Portability Program. In regards to the Policy and Research Division, this division um, provides the Rural Health Information Hub, which many of you may be very familiar with. And then there's also the Hospital State Division, which deals with the State Offices of Rural Health. And they also work very closely with CMS with the Medicare Rural Hospital Flexibility Grants, as well as the Small Hospital Improvement Grants. In regards to HRSA Special Observances, uh, some of the uh, observances that we promote throughout the year include National Rural Health Day, which this year will be in November, World AIDS Day, also the National Donate Life Month, which is this April, which is presently this month, and the National HIV Testing Day, which is in June. As far as HRSA technical assistance resources, I want to share with you some information. So we do have a portal, which is where you can find findahealthcenter.hrsa.gov. And this allows you to find HRSA-funded health centers um, within your state or within your region. Um, they have information regarding medical, dental, and behavioral health services. Um, they have a wide variety of information regarding provider information. Um, so this is a great resource, and I will share this with you, and you'll have this available at the end of this presentation. We also have the HRSA Data Warehouse, and this also has information where you can find a health center. You can also use and explore maps. 
You can query data. You can find shortage areas, um, health profession shortage areas. Um, you can also view HRSA fact sheets for various regions, for funding, for provider information. And you can also download data from HRSA.gov. And this is a very valuable resource. Some of the dashboards that are available at data.hrsa.gov include information regarding area health resources files. There's also information regarding grants, health profession shortage areas, health sites, demographics, and medically underserved areas and populations. So that is at data.hrsa.gov. And HRSA find a grant. So this may also be a very useful tool. So this is at data.hrsa.gov. And this is the HRSA data warehouse tools find grants. And this provides a wide variety of information regarding HRSA program areas, the types of grants that are available, the years that grants were active, and it also provides you information regarding specific grant activity codes. So if you have individuals that are looking for grant information or HRSA funding for existing uh, for existing HRSA grantees, this would be the tool that you would utilize. And you can actually query down and see um, specifically for certain states, for certain counties, and for certain cities where HRSA grantees are located and the types of grants that they receive. In regards to clinical consultation, uh, we also fund um, the Clinician Consultation Center. So this provides a wide variety of services in regards to HRSA consultative services. So we have a substance use consultation, hepatitis C. There's also HIV AIDS care consultation, perinatal HIV consultation, pre-exposure or PrEP consultation, and post-exposure PrEP consultation. And you may also contact clinicians online. So this service is available Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's also available on some weekends and some holidays, and all the services are free. So this may be a very um, useful um, service for you and your clients. We also have the Healthcare Workforce Connector, and this is where healthcare professionals connect with various sites. You can view more than 20,000 National Health Service Corps and Nurse Corps approved sites with nearly 5,000 job vacancies. So this is another resource for those healthcare professionals that are looking for jobs in medically underserved areas. So that is the Health Workforce Connector. Now in regards to HRSA's Office of Regional Operations, of which I'm a part of, there are 10 regions, however, we are one HRSA. As you can see, there are 10 regional office, offices and I'm located in the Chicago regional office. And I know that um, as far as the National Networks of Libraries of Medicine, um, the great Midwest region which is spread out. So what I've done is I've, um, as far as the Chicago regional office, of course we would serve um, your states of Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, Minnesota, Ohio, and Wisconsin. However, the Denver Regional Office would serve the states of North Dakota and South Dakota. So there's information there for the Denver Regional Office for the Office of Regional Operations. The Atlanta Regional Office, which is Region 4, um, would service your states of your state of Kentucky. And the Kansas City Regional Office would serve your state of Iowa. So, so these are the regional offices for HRSA's Office of Regional Operations that you would reach out to if you would like to connect with us. Now, the role and function of the Office of Regional Operations is strategic stakeholder partnerships, bureau and office collaboration, state, local, and tribal government engagement, outreach and education, regional surveillance, and special initiatives in HRSA priorities. Within the Chicago Regional Office, um, we have some um, outstation staff in the Bureau of Health Workforce 
and they primarily deal with the National Health Service Corps. They work with providers in medically underserved areas. We also have the Office of Financial Assistance and Management. They're like our auditors, so they pretty much audit the um, grantees that receive HRSA funding. <clears throat> we also have staff in the Maternal and Child Health Bureau. And then there is the staff that uh, are part of the Office of Regional Operations. And we act as the liaisons within the um, regional office. Tamara Cox is the regional administrator and I serve as her deputy. And we work very closely with state, local, and tribal officials on a daily basis. We ensure that they are aware of HRSA and HRSA's programs, but we also act as problem solvers and we provide surveillance to headquarters in regards to the needs, you know, whether it be resources or technical assistance needs of our partners and stakeholders. And we work very closely with community-based organizations as well. We also provide outreach and education, and I will share with you in a moment some of our current initiatives within HRSA's Office of Regional Operations in Chicago. And as I mentioned earlier, as Jacqueline had mentioned earlier, I have worked on special initiatives and HRSA priorities um, within the regions, and we also provide regional surveillance. So if there's information that uh, may be important to our headquarters um, in order to assist HRSA grantees and other stakeholders in the region, uh, regional staff will provide that information to Tamara Cox, who is the regional administrator, or myself, so that we can um, share that information with headquarters um, so that we can provide any resources or technical assistance that is needed here in the region. And as I sh shared, um, you know, we do have uh, very good relationships with our state and local public health leadership. We also provide technical assistance as needed to a wide variety of stakeholders. We represent HRSA and federal, state, and community task forces. We provide education, outreach, and grant workshops. And one of the things that several, well, that we all do in, in all the regions is that we do provide grant workshops. We do provide information on how to write successful um, grant applications. We also have a vision, design, and capacity training that is available as well. And we work with community-based organizations. Um, we work with um, HRSA funded health centers, and we work with state and local officials in a wide variety of initiatives. We also promote HRSA funding opportunities, awards, and initiatives as well. And here are some of our stakeholders. I mentioned this a little bit earlier. And we also work very closely with colleges and universities in private sector organizations and foundations as well. In regards to some of the Office of Regional Operations uh, Region 5 initiatives, some of the examples of the work that we do in the regional office include our African Immigrant Health um, initiatives in collaboration with the University of Minnesota. Um, we are also planning an African American Mental Health Summit um, in Indiana. We also provide behavioral health training, which is part of our mental health first aid training. We also work with our community partners in chronic disease prevention. One of the areas that, is, that my regional administrator is very passionate about is correctional health. And she works with correctional health institutions throughout the region to promote um, disease prevention and control, and also to ensure that these individuals that are leaving correctional facilities have employment, that they have health care or access to health care, as well as educational training. An initiative that we have in 2020 is health literacy, and we'll be working with the Hmong population in Minnesota. One of our public health analysts works on homelessness initiatives within the region. We also have some programming for hypertension prevention and control as well as infant and maternal mortality in collaboration with various partners and stakeholders. We also have a very strong presence in regards to rural health, as well as tribal health. The Office of Regional Operations, I've partnered um, with the National Networks of Library of Medicine in the Pacific Northwest region, a native youth community of care conferences, and they also participated in the Northwest Regional Conference 
of African immigrant health. And those events were held um, two or three years ago. So I have collaborated um, with the National Network of Library Libraries of Medicine in the past and have found the collaboration to be very beneficial. Now, as far as connecting with the Chicago regional staff, when should you contact the Office of Regional Operations? You can contact us or connect with us when you would like to um, learn more about HRSA or HHS programs. When you have questions about HRSA or HHS programs, if you have questions regarding data, policies, or resources. When you're looking for a new type of partner or a resource, including funding opportunities. And when you would like to share information with HRSA to inform decision-making or program, programming and when you would like HRSA representation at a meeting or event, or just to simply connect. Now, we might reach out to you when HRSA has information about new funding opportunities, policies, resources, or priorities, or when HRSA is convening stakeholders or brokering relationships, or when HRSA is collecting information to inform an issue, and when HRSA or HHS is interested in being present at a meeting or an event, and when HRSA is developing partnerships, and sometimes we'll just reach out simply to connect. So this is the staff of HRSA's Office of Regional Operations in Chicago. And we are a small but mighty staff, and we work in a wide variety of programs and initiatives within the region. And if you would like to contact me, here's my contact information, and this will be available after the presentation. And I would love to um, hear from each and every one of you um, regarding the work that you're doing in the region, and I'll also talk about possible collaborations in the future. So at this time, um, that's the end of my presentation regarding HRSA and its programs. Gary, thank you so much. Um, I I'm looking here in our chat box to see if any of our participants have uh, added, added any questions. And we, we did have a comment from Jane in Fort Wayne, Indiana. She said, thank you, Gary, and everybody for this extremely timely and valuable webinar. I hope that uh, I hope what I learned today will give me a tool to provide assistance to my community. Great. Um, Gary, I have a couple of questions for you, uh, and, and, and uh, participants, if you would like uh, to post your question in the chat box, that would be great. Uh, or what we can do is, um, have, if, you would, if you wish to speak, you let us know and uh, we can unmute you. So uh, my question is, can you... Do you sort of imagine that the regional HRSA office is, is somewhat of um, a local access to HHS? Definitely so. Definitely so. We work closely with, we work very closely with the operating divisions here um, within the region, and we serve as a liaison um, to other HHS um, operating divisions. So oftentimes people contact us because they don't have a contact possibly with CDC in the region or with CMS um, or um, AF. So you can definitely reach out to us and we will be more than happy um, to provide contact information for some of the operating divisions here in Region 5 or any other regions nationwide. It's not a problem. Um, that is our role here in the region. We we, we work as the ambassadors of HRSA, but we also work as ambassadors to HHS because oftentimes we are very forward facing um, with our partners and stakeholders in the region and they may not know how to contact um, some of the other HHS operating divisions. So we'd be more than happy um, to serve as a liaison. Excellent, thank you. So we have another question here. How do you predict the new HRSA funds for COVID-19 efforts to be spent? What kinds of initiatives, oh, I, uh, let me finish the whole thing and then you can tell me uh, if okay. you need me to repeat. Okay. Uh, how do you predict the new HRSA funds for COVID-19 efforts to be spent? And then what kinds of initiatives or support should we expect to see? 
Okay, so the um, recent funding uh, for COVID-19, that was released by the Bureau of Primary Health Care. So they are the bureau that funds the health centers um, throughout the United States. And there is an FAQ page that shows how the funding can be spent. And I'll be more than happy to provide that information um, to, any, to, to all the attendees. Um, it is an exhaustive list. So there, there were um, two, two funding streams. So um, there was funding in March, um, and that was the $100 million. And on average, the health centers received $70,000. Some received a little bit more. And then on April 8th, $1.32 billion um, was uh, released. And the health centers on average received about $900,000. Um, so there is a list of items that the health centers can spend the money on. And it's a wide variety of um, uses um, in regards to use of the funds. Um, some of the funding can be used for, um, you know, resources, you know, within the um, health center as far as PPE, um, as far as developing emergency plans, um, as far as salaries, um, and then there's, you know, money set aside for health education within, within the community, um, telehealth resources. So there are a wide variety of things that the funding can be utilized for. And I can provide um, the attendees with that information. Very good. And we also had another, uh, another uh, request to receive that link for information. So we'll get that okay. out when we follow up with our uh, follow up emails after the webinar. Uh, another uh, question here. Uh, from Jane, who uh, is from Fort Wayne, Indiana, and uh, looks like she's at uh, Indiana Tech. And um, her comment is, like many participants, I am working from home. What suggestions do you have to help the people in my community? In regards to, I guess I'm not understanding the question, I'm sorry. Jane, would you like to uh, elaborate? I have unmuted you, Jane, if you would like to speak. Go ahead, Jane. You're live. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Ah, good morning. Thank you. So, uh, hello. Thank you so much for speaking with us, Gary. This is extremely helpful um, information. Um, I, I'm working at home, and, and I want to know how I can provide assistance uh, to our community um, fr from home. How can how can I help? I don't really know how to help the people. Um, I have no way to connect to them in, in, as I normally do in person. Um, how do I co um, contact my local office? Um, I need a lot of a lot of help. I, I'm I'm very upset as as to how the population is is extremely vulnerable to this virus and the rate with which uh, people are are dying, not recovering. And I don't feel like they're receiving the help they need. So Jane, so Jane, what type of work do you do? Librarian, academic librarian. Oh, okay. Um, and, I, and I provide a lot of assistance to the uh, students on campus who are here. Uh, th they're the work-study students. And okay. They're, they're receiving basically 100% financial aid. Okay. Well, I know that a lot of organizations, just like uh, just like HRSA, we're utilizing uh, various platforms uh, like we're using today, um, and um, utilizing social media as well in regards to communicating with our partners and stakeholders. So that's definitely one thing that um, our, my regional administrator has really emphasized is that during this period of time. 
um, we're going to have, you have to be creative. And, you know, one of the things that we are doing is that we are utilizing the technology that is available to us because we're not able to connect with our partners and stakeholders in person, you know, but we are able to um, connect with them via email, um, whether it be Skype, um, whether it be Zoom, um, that is probably the safest and the most effective and efficient way of communicating, you know, with your stakeholders at this point is probably utilizing those type of uh, platforms. And it's frustrating for everyone. Um, my uh, regional administrator, Tamara Cox, um, she's, uh, she's going crazy because <laughs> she, she is uh, one of those individuals that, you know, likes that um, contact, that professional contact, and she likes dealing with individuals on a one-on-one -on -one basis and reaching out to partners and stakeholders, and she's going absolutely stir-crazy. But um, this is a new normal for us at, during this period of time, and I, and I think everyone is feeling the same frustration that you're feeling. Thank you, Gary, and thank you, Jane. Um, one of the questions here, Gary, is how do we stay in touch with what is happening in HRSA? Is there a newsletter, a feed? Yes, um, so you can definitely, I can send you uh, the link to Gov Delivery, and that will um, provide you with subscriptions to um, the various HRSA online publications, and I can provide that information to you. And please um, connect, connect with us. And I also shared information regarding the other HRSA regional offices um, of which the great, Miss, the great Midwest region is a part of. Um, you can also connect with those regional offices as well. But feel free to reach out to me. Um, I will send a link um, for the HRSA Gov delivery um, for, it, for the electronic newsletters that are sent out to various partners and stakeholders. Um, but, um, but you also have my information as well. So if there's specific information that you need um, regarding, uh, you know, regional connections or information, uh, you know, regarding other regions, I'll be more than happy to put you in contact um, with the resources that you need. Very good, Gary, thank you. Um, I have a question. You mentioned the Mental Health First Aid Program. Can you tell us a little more about that? Okay, so that is not a HRSA program. That is something that various regions have done throughout the years. And it's, it, it's, it's really based upon the needs of our partners and stakeholders um, within the region. Um, Ann Wong is our uh, tribal lead in Region 5. And she works on, a, she works on many initiatives um, with our tribal entities within Region 5. And behavioral health is one of those areas um, where there's a dire need. So sometimes she will provide certain types of training, like mental health first aid training. When I was in Region 10, when I was working with the tribes or um, other uh, like faith-based organizations, mental health first aid training was something that we provided. Um, so um, if there is a need uh, for mental health first aid training, um, you can definitely get in contact with me and I can um, assess the need you know, with my regional administrator um, to see whether or not um, you know, this is something that we can possibly do. Um, but mental health first aid training is, um, is not a HRSA program. That's a nationwide program. And I, and I believe that it was a, it's a program that was initiated by the National Con uh, Council on Behavioral Health. I may be wrong. Um, but I know that is something that they do promote. And various organizations provide mental health first aid training. So um, that's just something that we have done in the past. That's great. I, I think that's a program that should be uh, better well known and promoted. Right. And, and the mental health first aid training, they have a, um, when I was in Region 10, we did um, a mental health first aid training that was uh, targeting tribal. They also have a youth uh, mental health first aid training, and they also have a rural mental health first aid training for rural populations. So it, it can definitely um, be um, utilized um, in a wide variety of settings for a wide variety of populations. Excellent, thank you. We have a comment from Lynn, uh, and Lynn says, I work at a public library, and we are trying to have links on the library's website to different organizations, such as HRSA, that patrons might be able to tap into for help. And also, if you uh, have a text or librarian service or email to your reference staff, 
they have a virtual library. Um, click on the provides information during this time. So that's a creative way of um, connecting HRSA to your constituents. Thanks, oh. Lynn. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Gary, um, you said that um, in other times, not the present, you could you can um, come to uh, particular events. Can you name some types of events that you might um, uh, appear at and the kinds of things that uh, you, you might be able to discuss with? Uh... Sure, not a problem. Um, HRSA, especially in the regional office, as I said, we serve as amb ambassadors, as liaisons um, here in the region. So we can, we can provide overviews of HRSA, um, HRSA and its programs. Um, we, we work with churches, we work with universities and colleges, um, we work with uh, community-based organizations, we, we work with state, local, and county governments. So if you ever need um, information regarding HRSA, HRSA's programs, um, we do provide um, some trainings like vision design um, and capacity training, which is like a grant uh, writing uh, workshop. Um, we have have had you know behavioral health presentations where we bring in subject matter experts for that, but that's something that we can definitely do. Um, and as I shared with you um, earlier, um, we have um, Antonio Vargas, Commander Tony, um, Antonio Vargas, um, who is a public health analyst. Well, actually, he's a senior public health analyst um, with our regional office. So he he works in a wide variety of initiatives like homelessness. Um, he did a, a, a presentations or uh, had a forum on hypertension uh, prevention and control, and and he's also going to be a health be doing a health literacy um, event for the Hmong population in Minnesota. But uh, there again, um, as in the past, I've worked with the national networks of library medicine and wide variety of initiatives like the Native Youth um, Community of Care Initiative. Um, and we kind of uh, merged our goals and objectives together. We kind of crosswalked it um, to ensure that we we're meeting the goals and objectives of HRSA and uh, my counterpart, um, Pat Devine, um, in the Pacific Northwest region. She kind of crosswalked and made sure that um, she met her goals and objectives. We did that not only with that event, but also with the African Immigrant Conference where your organization provided information on health literacy. Um, so, um, we can come up with creative ways to uh, to collaborate. Um, and if you ever, you know, need us, or if you need a speaker um, from HRSA, or even if you need a speaker from another operating division, um, we'll be more more than happy to put you in contact with the with the right person for the operating division. So, um, you know, the um, opportunities are unlimited. Um, Jacqueline, you and I were going to work on the uh, initiative, you know, with uh, with the organization here in Chicago, and um, I know that we'll definitely work on other collaborations in the future. So, if there's, you know, if you have any ideas, um, the beautiful thing about working um, here in Region Five and and and, and working for. Uh, Tamara Cox as a regional administrator is that um, we have a lot of latitude. She's very creative. Um, we work with a wide variety of partners and um, we're actually able to work on projects that are near and dear to us. So if, um, if anyone on this call, you know, has any ideas for collaborations with, with working with Rosa, I think I, I gave you a very fast uh, and very, uh, uh, Cursory overview of HRSA. I mean, I, I spoke for an hour and a half, but I don't think you all would have want, wanted to hear me speak for an hour and a half on HRSA. But I gave you an overview. So I think you have a pretty good idea of HRSA and its program. So if there's something that you would like to do with us, by all means, re reach out, reach out to me. Great, Gary. I think it just involves a little bit of creativity there as well. Yes. So yeah. Yes. Um, we did have a request uh, from uh, to, uh, of Lynn, who talked about her library and the web page, and mm -hmm. um, they would like Lynn to share her public library's homepage link. So um, if you care to put that in the chat box here, we can make sure it's available to others. Okay. So um, we have more. Uh, 
it's the question here is can you talk more about HRSA programs focused on feeding those struggling with hunger during COVID? Is that part of your homelessness program or is there a separate fund for that now? Okay, so that would be a HRSA program. That would probably be a uh, USDA program. So Department of Agriculture program. Now the homelessness um, initiative, and that's an initiative, that's one, that was a project of Commander Antonio Vargas. So that is something that he's very passionate about. And as I said, the regional administrator allowed us to work on specific project and um, but the but homelessness is not a that's not part of our um, you know HRSA programs um, but we do collaborate with those entities that do work in homeless programs so we, we can look at HRSA resources and whether or not I mean is it I mean is a part of you know CH you know um, and how do we kind of cross like those programs with the USDA programs. Health centers, um, many of the HRSA funded health centers work with USDA on nutrition services um, for clients. Um, don't want to, um, to give anyone the impression that you know, the HRSA regional office has a homelessness program. Um, we kind of illuminate um, the issues and the problems within the region just to provide education to our partners and stakeholders. And we do collaborate with those um, entities that do provide services to, to the homeless population. So a lot of times um, that is what we do. We just illuminate the issue. We try to find resources and uh, we try to serve as a liaison so that those in need um, can be paired up with those that have the resources. Great, Gary, thank you. Um, we're coming up towards uh, the end of the hour and I'd like to share a couple of upcoming opportunities uh, for webinar training and some of them do address many of the issues that have been presented here today. The first one is um, called Leading with Compassion during the COVID-19 crisis and I'm going to provide the link for that in the chat box. And then also we have another program coming up, putting the self back in self-care, wellness in the time of COVID-19. And I'll provide a link for that training as well. So um, it, Miles has uh, added that uh, there will be a link to the recording presented in about a week. Uh, it will be uploaded to YouTube. Uh, and so if anybody would like to review a lot of the information or uh, perhaps were uh, unable to attend today's session, they can do so uh, shortly after this. And anyone who has registered for the webinar will be uh, receiving an email that will uh, assist them with um, finding the contacts that Gary has offered to share as well as access the recording. Now, for those of you who are interested um, in obtaining MLACE for today's session, I'm gonna provide a link in the uh, chat box. But more than that, uh, we use this link here as an evaluation so that you can tell us um, comments uh, about your experience here today. So I'm going to put that chat, I'm going to put that link in the chat box, and then that also will be followed up with the email. And there is the link that will take you to the evaluation page and also will allow you to uh, obtain CE from the Medical Library Association for today's webinar. Gary, any any uh, last um, last comments before we close up for today? Well, the only thing that I want to say to everyone is uh, thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to learn about HRSA and HRSA's programs and to stay safe and to stay very healthy and you know, 
to me. Uh, if, if you uh, need any information, uh, we'll be more than happy to assist you in whatever way possible. All right, thank you. Thank you, everyone. And we're gonna end the meeting now. Thanks again, Gary, and everyone be safe. All right, thank you. Thanks for watching. This video was produced by the National Network of Libraries of Medicine. Select the circular channel icon to subscribe to our channel. Select a video thumbnail to watch another video from the channel.